Did you ever had a problem that you had to take your phone to the repair shop and the guy told you that it would take two weeks until you get your phone back? <laughs> I just realized how many apps there are that I just cannot use. But I know I'm not a victim, I'm a survivor. And we're going to solve this issue with this real simple technique that we call virtualization. Let's begin. Hey guys, Samir from Vason.pro and sorry for the cheesy intro. <laughs> I wanted to do it a little bit differently, so that's why I ended up with. Anyway, it is a true fact that I did lose my phone and that without it, I currently have uh, some of my apps not available. So that's how this whole blog post started actually. And that's what we're going to see today. We're going to virtualize the Android OS system. And there are different ways to do that. Um, one and there's a cool article is maybe you should check it out it's a way to um, virtualize the uh, android oper operating system uh, with some emulators one of the most famous one is uh, bluestacks uh, i used it in the past and it was pretty okay i, I think I, li I yeah i liked it but i had some performance issues at that time um, but that's already like three or four years ago so i don't know how it is now but yeah that uh, is one of the currently of the most favorite apps for most people to uh, one Android. They also got this one, Samarin. Not much uh, experience with it. Um, I did use uh, Droid 4X. Works pretty fine, but um, I found it pretty difficult to set up. And yeah, you have some other ones. But check it out. Um, other way to do it is through, well, uh, virtualization and one of the things that I already use is uh, VMware Workstation uh, but on Mac it's called VMware Fusion now I'm going to delete this one and I'll show it in a later episode test refresh yeah uh, VMware Workstation and in this case on the Mac it's called Fusion and I currently use it for as my Windows OS so um, in the beginning when I bought my laptop I always had an, uh, when I in 2012 I already had a MacBook and I uh, um, virtualized Windows on it so that I could use Visio and Word on a normal way. So yeah, um, but this is also possible for Android, and that's what we're going to do today. So how are we going to virtualize it? Well, first things first, you need to download the ISO, and that can be done here, Android-x86.org, and it's a cool website that, well. Uh, the developers build um, every time a new release for the Android and uh, in this case uh, an ISO to, for you to use uh, in your virtualization um, so yeah I choose chose this one uh, we're now around uh, August in 2018 maybe if you check this video one year later there are some new versions out and you should definitely check it out it's all free so that's cool it's a fun uh, project and if you like it, uh, definitely support those guys. All right, now coming back, we're going to use that ISO that, we, that I downloaded um, to make a virtual machine and to run on it. <laughs> and I'm low on battery, so we have to make this a quick video. Funny how the Windows is playing it f first before my Mac is complaining. Oh, Windows. Is spent saves me some energy and probably I will make it to the end of this video and for the people who are not uh, used to virtualization virtualization is actually a, a, a technology and technique that um, abstracts the hardware layer from the operating system or the software and makes it a virtual hard hardware layer that makes it quite easy for you to, to run applications on different systems so that's um, virtual virtualization in a, in a quick uh, summary. Alright, 
Well, what you're going to do is you click New after you download the ISO. And there are two ways to, to uh, make a new machine. One of it is do it by hand and custom. So let's say create a custom virtual machine. In this case, we need free BSD version 10. And I have the 32-bit version that I need. So I choose this one. But for the other operating systems, you can also use Windows, Apple, Linux, whatever you want. Um, so yeah, you can choose that one, say continue, and then you can install it. And afterwards, you can attach, it, attach the uh, ISO and install it. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently because I'll show you how much easier it is to do it from this point of view. And it is from install from disk. And if I say use another disk or image, he already selected it, but I'll show you how it's done otherwise, actually. It's here, say Android, select that one. And he already detects which operating system it needs. It's going to use FreeBSD, and it says version 10 and earlier, not 11. Um, and maybe this changes if you have uh, um, one or two years later the newer version of uh, operating system so that's uh, uh, a good way to uh, well to know more for sure which operating system you want to use all right then you say continue I will use the legacy BIOS this most handy for this uh, case and I already click customize settings and this way it already prompt me to change the settings otherwise if I don't it will boot up and that's annoying because you want to change some settings, otherwise you will definitely not, uh, at least on the Macintosh, have an, uh, a working uh, Android. Because it, it needs some uh, resources. Android, that one, test version two, just call the name, three, just to be sure. All right, I'm going to, Close this one. Ah, you already popped up the screen. So this is the, uh, the settings. Well, one of the things that you want to do is you want to give it a little bit more memory. You can give it 512, but I go just to have a little bit of a quick machine here. Just to be quick. 2024, so one gig. And let's give it two processors uh, just to speed it up. More processors doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be much quicker and better, and your operating system does have to have the capacity to do it. Or the, um, the hardware itself, I mean, your operating system, of course, but also, but... Um, so yeah, let's go back, show all, and this one is really important, because this most of the time is one of the reasons that it doesn't work in the beginning. You have to select accelerate 3d graphics and i will go for also one gigabyte because when i choose to recommend it settings last time it didn't work so that's much for recommendations all right and then you already have everything that you need you get enough resources for your machine to uh, to boot up well two things that you can do as well yeah it already selected it because you did in the beginning from install iso but here's where you can in the eyes so if you do it the other way uh, around and also good thing is that he has done it in ED IDE it's also important I squeeze you won't it's not support if you do it uh, that way um, and um, what was another thing it's oh yeah it's already in shows to use the um, to share my uh, uh, Wi-Fi directly through netting so network address donation and that's pretty nice it's a re really quick and easy way to set up your network for your Android machine so you don't even have to do any configuration so it's really handy only 3% left let's see if we make it and otherwise I will get my power that way all right install by clicking installation by pressing the down arrow now it's going to run the installation software. All right, press the down arrow one more time, and then all right, enter one more time. 
think we all that in there. Command control is for outside, you can click it inside. Yeah, now it does work. Sometimes it's a little bit buggy in the beginning, but it doesn't have to be afterwards. So press the down arrow, create modify. I don't want to use GPT. No, that was a big sound. Sorry if that if you heard it. I'm going to put that sound a little bit lower. Then select new partition. So all the space that you have, it gave him 20 gig and um, on a hard disk when you customize, for in your settings, you can customize that, but it's plenty enough for an Android OS. Select primary, make it bootable, and then you will see at the flags it will be bootable. The last thing to do is also important, wire partition tape to disk. If you don't, and you just like quit, it doesn't do anything and doesn't make a partition for you. So that run. Alright, I need to take the power adapter one progression. Professionalism is what we do best here at Face on the Pro. Totally prepared and stuff, you know. Making a video recording just before it's going to die on power. Good thing, Smear, good thing. Well. Oh, we're alive. Alright. So, um that's it. I did many more problems here. Yeah, now I'd now create the partition SDA1. Select it again and choose the format to ext4. I'm sure you want to format the partition data. Partition SDA1, yes. You want to install Woodler, yes. You really want that. You want to read and write. Sometimes it adds also the the new bootloader, but it's not that necessary to do it. In this installation, I think it's going to ask for that. Well, it's actually pretty quick with installation, and um, but this is all live right now. All right. I will choose Run Android, and because of that, I did already the, the 3D acceleration. It will run uh, without any problems directly. Otherwise, you have to turn it off, shut it down. Yeah, here's the Android screen you see. I will show you where you can shut it down, by the way. So, Command Control. Then you can get out of the screen with your mouse by pressing it. And Otherwise, you have to do shutdown, but it's a hard shutdown. With VMware tools, you can um, do it more gracefully. Yeah, back to the Android. And maybe you can hear the fans of my Mac uh, group. Or maybe that's also probably because of my. Uh, that's on 2. Well, now 3% again. But yeah. So that's pretty quick, right? I mean, it's all live right now. So let's click start with the mouse. It's checking for updates. And the cool thing is, he, he does check for updates because the internet is already enabled. I mean, it's that easy. No, you don't. I haven't done anything. Then made any settings for Wi-Fi connections, but they're already checking it on the internet because that's what I selected. Really fun that you check for updates, but I really don't need it. Set up as a new. Check 
checking the answer on. This takes more time than the, the installation itself. You also could skip the process, but never mind. It's still really quick, so it should be taking much longer. Yeah, I will skip this part if you don't mind. It's only for uh, demo purposes. Scoop. I'm in Brussels, well, Antwerp, it will be over also soon. I'm really in the move right now, so, like I said, sorry if I uh, do it really professional right now. That's what we do best. No thanks. It's just a little bit hectic. Oh, we didn't even see the, the little people there. Raving and laughing. Oh. This is the launch that I choose. I will choose always because it's getting annoying. And there you go. You have your Android system. It's really with some basic apps though. You don't have much in the beginning. So you still have to install the apps. And that's a good thing as well. And I will show you. The Play Store is not always that functional. It doesn't work always. I have tried to quite some different ISOs as well and Play Store can have some problems but an easy way to fix it and to still install uh, apps from the Play Store is by using it in Google Chrome so in Google Chrome you can go to the Play Store as well and there if you select the apps uh, you can install it so that's a way to uh, work around uh, the issue I don't know why it's, it, it happens sometimes but it does but anyway so yeah, here you have it, an Android 8.1 version uh, on your Macintosh. Enjoy, and um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, uh, well, please let a thumbs up or uh, give a, or place a, a comment. Thank you very much, and I wish you a good day. See ya.